In the, right, in this video we're going to continue studying first order differential equations and we're going to still work with integration but with an extra little bit in. It's going to be called separation of variables and in general we're going to use it for differential equations of this form and then what we do is we do this little bit of division here and we get this f of y obviously here it's equal to this h of y is equal to 1 over f of y so that's this little division we do there and then we rearrange here to get the y's on that side and the x's on that side and finally we integrate both sides and that gives with a solution. So the method here is step one we separate variables, we integrate both sides and we solve for y in terms of x although we don't always bother with that but it's best to if it's easy to do and obviously if it says on an exam paper to do it. So let's look at the first example. I'm going to start with step one. I'm going to separate the variables. So when I do that, what this is, what I'm going to get, I'm going to get a function on this side, which is going to be, which is going to be, what side I've put one over, that should be y. And remember, this, these are both going to be integrals. I'm just separating the variables. So that's what we'll get when we separate the variables. And then we're going to integrate both sides and get 1 third y cubed equals 1 third x to the 3 plus c. And you don't have to put c on both sides because it's still just a constant whether you've got two times it, it's still just a constant. And we don't know what it is, so it's the same thing really. So that's the solution we get, and I'm not going to solve it in terms of why, because I'll probably run out of time if I do, but you can do it if you like. Right, so let's look at the next example now. First thing I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to separate the variables. And on the, this side here, I'm going to get 1 over y squared. And that's an integral. Integrate it. And then we're going to get integral of minus 4x on the other side. And then we integrate both sides. And you can rewrite this as y to the minus 2 and integrate like that. But because I've had more practice, I'm just going to go straight for it. And yet it comes out to be that. And check that if you're not sure. And then we integrate this. You should know how we integrate this. We we'll get. And then we'll, when we we'll simplify, we'll get this. And then when we we'll rearrange, finally, we we'll divide and, and we're we'll reversing signs over this side, so we we'll get... This is my solution in terms of y, although that's still the solution as well, but this one's completely just in terms of y where this one's uh, minus 1 over y. Now finally let's um, just do our last example. So again I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to separate my variables. 
On this side I'm gonna get one over Y. Cause you know we're reversing operations, this is just really like an algebraic procedure. And I've still got me one over X on this side. So now we integrate both sides and from here you should remember from your calculus classes that the integral of this is the natural logarithm of the absolute value of y. And this one's the same but we've got variable x. And we want a plus c as well. So that is your solution and you can have that as just your solution but we can easily rearrange this so let's do it. What I can do is I can take the logarithm of that as well. So I can do this. This might be a bit strange but you can do it because it's just a constant. And then I can use my law of logarithms and I can write that as still got that on this side and then after logarithm of I'll put the constant in front because that's what you do generally and then I can unlog both sides by taking the exponential because that's the inverse operation so then I get y on this side because we don't need the absolute value it's not really necessary we'll just write it because it's the rule and then we get c times x so that's the solution for that equation so notice we don't always add the constant on Okay, so we don't always add the constant on. And I've moved these absolute values here because they're not necessary because at this point these can be anything but I we'll have to put absolute values in these cases for the rule which you will already know from your algebra class so I'm not going to bother explaining that. So that's how we solve equations by separation of variables.